All right, you guys, this is your girl, Lady Rachel, with Singles with a Testimony, y'all. Saturday morning, we always uh, on here at 1 p.m., not morning, but afternoon, 1 p.m., where you can catch us on the BPGinspirationalStation.com, where we serve up hot tea, as we always say, loving y'all for free. Though the tea is hot, it's always good for the soul. We like to get on here, talk about real topics, because this is real life that people uh, go is going through. So. The topic, knowing when to walk away, detoxing my soul. So everybody I know that's listening have been in a relationship one day too long. Why we stay when we know the relationship is over, when we know the person is no good for us, but for whatever reason, um, we choose to stay. So I have back on here again, two of the people that have been here from way in the beginning, my brother, Mark. And my sister, my line sister, Miss Lady, I am beautiful, Omisha Adams. So, guys, we're going to go ahead and dive right on into it and get to going and finding out from these two beautiful people, uh, why do we stay and when do we know when it's time to walk away? All right. So, Miss uh, Omisha, yes, can you uh, share with us um, why do you think why would you stay in a relationship when you know it's over when you know it's toxic and then when you know to walk away why do you or why don't you um so i'm just gonna speak from my experiences um sometimes i've stayed because i felt less than and i thought that was the only person i could have at the time um i've stayed because the sex was good i mean Sometimes you just stay because of that. Um, yeah, but it, it's crazy because I, I I always knew the person was no good for me. I always knew the person was toxic and just was no good. But it was like those glimmer of hopes that mm -hmm. he would give you would make you stay. Like as much bad as he do, as much ugly as he act, those glimmers of light. Like okay, he's changing, or um, okay, maybe this could work. Would make you stay in a toxic relationship um why should you leave because at the end of the day like my shirt's like i'm enough i'm enough to walk away i deserve better i am better um sometimes it's staying as a learned behavior you saw your mama stay your granny stay your auntie stay um you didn't really have a good female role model i'm not as far as you know relationship wise um it's just a lot of factors you know, you stay for the kids, for people who have children. You stay for the kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. doing well. You need to go, but he's the provider. You might not work, and you stay for your children. But for me, I wound up walking away because at the end of the day, like like I said, I'm enough. I deserve better. I knew who I started to know who I was and get to know who I am. And it was like, you know what? Time I got to go. Dudes can't do nothing for your homeboy. You good. <laughs> Okay, so we are going to pass the mic to uh, my brother Mark, because we know most women, we tend to stay, you know, and sometimes guys be like, hey, whatever, it ain't working for me. Um, so mm, I, I've heard guys say that they stay for the convenience. So uh, you guys, we're going to hear from my brother Mark. Why do men stay in toxic, in toxic relationships? And when they know it's time to go, why don't they go or why do they go? But, but again, like she said, we speak from personal experiences. And for me, myself, it is, even though we, we don't say it or won't say it, men are emotional too, like women, but we show it in a different format. Mm -hmm. So we end up with the same ties. You know what I'm saying? You feel less than, or you feel like this is the only person that I uh, can get that would tolerate me. Or mm -hmm. some men think mm -hmm. like, for a while, I thought, you know, I'm not, the best looking man in the world i can't get nothing else she is a keeper she's a gold mine she's a queen she's beautiful i got her let me deal with the bull so i can keep her you see mm -hmm. what i'm saying you get stuck in that rat race of thinking the wrong thoughts or getting pulled into a dark space of your own because as a person you're broken or you're healing from something else that you keep pushing down and with that you you can compressing all of these things within yourself 
Mm -hmm. All you see, like she said, is that light at the end, that little little glimmer, you know. Oh, I got a girl that's fine, so I'm gonna stay. Oh, I right, got a girl right. that's bad. All the, all the niggas like her, so let me keep her, you know, because I got her. So I'm gonna yeah. stay here, even though she's the worst thing in the world for you, and you know it. It's not fit for you, it's not set for you, and anything of that nature. But at this point, again, you get to a point where you understand the point of loving yourself first. Mm -hmm. And that's the only way to be happy. So you do turn or tend to walk away from everything. Like now I'm on a platform where any signs of you don't want to be here, cool, bye, it's over. Don't worry about it. Hello. We ain't got to talk about it no more. You ain't got, ain't no going back. If you decided you wanted to go or you had any glimpse of this being over or my end or this, this and that, that means you thought about it. So go ahead and go do what you wanted to do because in a relationship or a reason for us to be together is for us to be together through the good and the bad. So it shouldn't be a thought process of you thinking anywhere near this is over or should be over unless it is proven that this, we are bad for each other, that it's not going to work, then mutual understanding should be good and be done with it. Ain't nothing to fight about, ain't nothing to drag ain't on. Nothing to fight about. <laughs> right, it ain't, it ain't nothing to fight about, because what, what are we fighting for in the end? Uh, please, I would like to know. <laughs> right, because I'm, I'm, I'm like, you, you're fighting me to say, uh, I want to stay, we need to work this out, but what are we working on in the end if it's the fight in the first place? Okay, all righty. Now, I've heard it um, said before that sometimes people, um, they will, like you made some good points, sister, about, you know, we stay for the kids or um, because I don't feel that I am enough or whatever. So a lot of that seems to stem from fear. You know, some people stay in relationships because they're just afraid to be by themselves. You know, yeah. uh, I've known some that say, you know, they'll come out of one relationship and instead yeah. of giving themselves yeah. space, they'll get right into another one because mm -hmm. they're afraid to be by themselves. Oh, I definitely yeah. know people like that. That get out of one relationship and then you like, oh, girl. Oh. And then you talk to them again, girl. Oh, I think I might have found the one. Um, <laughs> didn't you just cry? <laughs> this like you never like they don't give them time that they, they don't give themselves time to breathe or to heal it's almost like okay he not here let's see what else i can get with let's move on let's keep it going like you have no people like that they haven't healed and then when they do or when god places somebody in their lives that are the one for them they tend to push them away or scam them off because yeah Self sabotage. <laughs> You'd have been in so many back to back to back that you really don't understand that this is the man for you or this is the person for you. And you don't know how to hold on to him because at the end of the day, you like, mm -mm, no. I mean, let me move on. I don't, I don't want this one no more. Let me move on. So, yes, I definitely know people like that who jump from person to person to person. And I just don't understand it because after 30 minutes of me just not, mm, I just can't, uh, I can't handle it. <laughs> okay now brother of course we all know that it's said that you know men just okay pick one up boom toss them and go to the next um <laughs> i mean you know it seems like men but but like you're saying though men are emotional even though we don't see that they want to admit it they are just as emotional though what is it and and why when they go into or come out of one toxic relationship they go right into another one well you you as a man too you know that stipulation that society has put on a man to be this pillar and be this strength and to be this rock that you can't have a vulnerability side we play into it so it's like you become that person that has zero filter or zero mm. uh, understanding for the one thing that happens so it's like if you say we done or whatever the case may be and i close that door that's exactly what it is a closed door so i walk in the next one that's mm -hmm. and that's all it becomes you know it's it's not even like i gotta practice i gotta wait i gotta recover i gotta do this i gotta do that it's just like walking in the mall i walk out of foot like i walk in the foot action it's, it's the same thing it's not even i don't have to worry about 
did I find the shoes I wanted in Foot Locker? Oh, well, they didn't have it. So let me go see what Foot Action got. And I'm going to give me some shoes over here. And it's like you walk in and walk out. And even though you haven't taken the time to heal or to process that or even to do it, it mm-hmm. gets pushed to the back. Because again, I'm not allowed to show that. You see what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I cannot allow myself to be a broken male in public or to another person because mm-hmm. of that fact that it's deemed wrong or it's deemed too sensitive or you deemed feminine if you show an emotional side or mm-hmm. anything mm-hmm. of that nature. And how dare you as a man have a standard? Like, no, nah, that's, that's the yeah, wrong thing to true. have based on what's expected of us, especially as a Black man. You know, as a Black man, you're expected to, you know, be the head of the household, be the pillar, be the financial bearer, and to, to be the strongest in the family, to, to be the doctor, to be the therapist, to be the construction worker, to be everything that's needed <laughs> to go into a household is expected for the male role sure. with true. no kind of consoling, no kind of conditioning, no kind of uh, emotional breakdowns or nothing of that nature. Because when you do that, then it's, you're deemed weak or on your way out. Hmm. So you're saying that as a man, you go from out of one door into the other because you're not allowed to give yourself time to breathe. You're not allowed to give yourself uh, time to rest. But of course you said, because of that's what society puts this stipulation um, on you. Though, do y'all think for our listeners that as I think uh, Lady Amisha said it, sometimes it's a learned behavior. Um, I think that that's a learned behavior, especially like you say in the our culture, our community, that, you know, you like, hey, this player mentality, as they say, you know, okay, well, forget her, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get another one, I'm gonna replace her, instead of, or either you look for certain type of women, even though, like you say, they really, you know, they don't really have anything to offer, if you understand what I'm saying, except right. for certain little things they can do, a certain, little, a, a certain way that they look, and, and like you say, she might be nothing on the inside, no mm-hmm. type of standards, uh, no, nothing, no substance, but she stacked or whatever the case may be, as you say it. And that's what you go for. But really, she's not good for you. She's not an encourager. She don't build you up. She just take, take, right. take, right. you know, but yet that seems to be what you like. And as Sister Misha said, when you do find a lady that is trying to build you up because you've been used to, you tend to want to gravitate. Um, to that so that's another thing when they say no, no one went to leave and and it's just the thing because you see so many people in relationships just why is that you know when we see the door to and then when we see the door for us to walk out of why don't we walk out of it because again you didn't put yourself in that box to where you're stuck you know you're like you're stuck in a rut to where you believe this is all you got this is all you have to offer. This is all you're going to get. This is all that's told to you. Because again, like you said, a learned behavior. For a man, it ain't, it's not even a learned behavior. It's a standard or a pattern that's shown to you by peers, significant others, and other out in society that says, hey, you're a man. What you crying for? You're a man. You can get another woman. What you doing that for, man? It's, 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 it's 10 more down the street. What you crying about that one for? Go on, close the door and go on over here. I got somebody else for you. You go, you think about it as a woman, you vent with your women, y'all talk about it. Y'all can have a conversation about how he broke your heart or how he messed you over or how he did this and how he did that over a glass of wine or at dinner and be chilling. Let a man walk into a group of men and be like, man, she killed me, she left me. But they going to laugh up and down the street with that, <laughs> for real. And he going to really be there looking sad and pitiful. And he going to be the outcast out of the group because he considered the weakling because he's emotional. So nobody wants to be pegged at that. So they go in with the with the chest puffed out and the rock hard up. Oh, man, she left. I ain't worried about her. I got another one down the street. I'm, I was thinking about the girl at Starbucks I saw yesterday and I said, what's up anyway? You know, and yeah. most men have one already waiting in the wings before they walk out anyway because of those kind of standards. You see what I'm saying? It becomes that kind of window. If you know you're on a downhill spiral, he already pulling somebody else in on the pocket until she says she's leaving. 
You know what I'm saying? He stayed for convenience because a lot of a lot of men stay with the women. You live in her house, but I'm gonna chill until she tell me I got to go. But I got, you know, I got Mrs. Miss Walmart already on back home because she cool with me and I spend the whole while I'm out on the street. You know, so the- it, it, it becomes a not even learn, like I said, a talk pattern because that's what's expected. That's what's yeah. guided through the youth or the men that it, that's a part of what's going on. So they're being shown this kind of path versus talk, how to sit still and, you know, vent and actually be an emotional, uh, emotional vulnerable male and still be respected. Yeah. It, 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 you still can be respected on that end. Like, oh, I, yeah, absolutely. Point, I, could care, I could care less what anybody has to say about me. I have a problem with a lot of things, you know. I, I like right now, I'm dealing with a self sabotaging person, and it's hard to get over that or deal with that. But it's time to let it go because yeah. no matter how hard you push, uplift, try to bring, try to, uh, you know, reassure and everything else, something is found to sabotage it anyway. And if you're going to spend that much time sabotaging this, I can't spend all my time trying to put it back together. So that's not for me. It's time to go ahead and move around. So it's crazy. It's crazy that you say that because it's a person that I I know we have been like on and off since my 20s. And it has been so much hurt, lies, self sabotage, not on my end, on that person's end. And, you know, we reconnected again not too long ago. And I'm just looking like, like you still like you still in the same situation. Yeah. Like nothing has progressed. Like you still like you're still here. We haven't talked in months. And you're in the same situation as you was in when I started talking to you months ago. Like, come on, like stop self-sabotage. And they were, you know, very honest about what had been going on, yada yada yada. And I'm looking like same thing that was going on a couple months ago. Like mm-hmm. nothing. Had- mm-hmm. And I'm like, Omisha, how many times can you keep saving this person or keep right. reassuring this person's gonna be all right right or keep being their um fall guy yeah fall, like i can't <laughs> but but okay so I, i'll say this to you miss omisha uh-huh you as a nurturing woman mm-hmm. seeing the silver lining in that dark cloud mm-hmm. regardless of how many time it had rained on mm-hmm. your head you still can see the silver lining. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I, don't, I can't tell you exactly what's the attraction to keep this silver lining being brought to your vision, but no matter what, it seems to see. And, it, and that's because your natural instinct as a woman and a right. natural and a caring person helps you to see that. Oh, but that silver lining has been could burn. Uh, <laughs> but but see, that's what I'm saying. So the good part is, is you know that now you have your umbrella. You know what I'm saying? But you still can see past the dark clouds to see what's supposed to be there, even though you're choosing not to deal with it anymore, which is cool. But as a man, we're not looking for no silver lining. Yeah, me too. We see that. So and, and you're taught to see the sunshine in front of you. I, I don't care nothing about the cloud. You see what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Whether whether that sunshine be some double D chest or some uh, a 36 uh, on the back end and all this other stuff, that's the sunshine. Ah! The okay. <laughs> she said, ah, but he, that's what I'm saying. And that, that's true, because I had this one guy tell me, he said, girl, it's power in the booty. Basically, I know y'all laughing listeners out there. And I say, say what? And, you know, so... There again, uh, listeners, if y'all are listening to them, one, what I'm hearing, and for me, um, as you grow, as you mature, um, things should change. And then two, like she's saying, she's talked to this person and they're still in the same spot. They're still in the same place. Brother Mark said, okay, this situation, no matter how much I reassure, no matter how much I encourage, no matter how much I uplift, they still trying to sabotage. Not trying to take it all there, but to be honest, when we do not have a foundation, when we don't have any type of a relationship with God, um, because when you get into a relationship, you got to know, first of all, that relationship is not to save you. 
that relationship is not to complete you. You should come in bringing in, not looking necessarily to get. That's really when you go into one, it's like, what can I add? What can I bring? You know, you don't want to, uh, one of our shows before the guest said that when you get into a relationship with someone, you should not leave them worse than what they were. If anything, you should add. But for whatever reason, we tend to go in and one sign and one thing for me in any relationship, if it is not adding, if it's not adding, it's it's kind of like, no, like, like Brother Mark said, after a while now, you get to the point to where after a certain time, okay, I'm seeing the signs and stuff, no disrespect or anything, I'm going to go ahead and walk now and let you go ahead and, and walk and do you, you know, because we stay and yes, you can see hope and that's good and all that we're going to see hope though. Sometimes I see the hope though, that, that just may not be my assignment though. Right. You know, that may and not then, be my assignment. At that point, you know how I take it? I take it as it was my job to get them ready to move to the next point. And I go on by my business. Yeah. And see, it's crazy because men can go on about their business, even though we understand that as women, maybe I'm not, maybe this assignment was not for me, but after putting all the work and then they move on and make it successful with somebody else, you know, we still be like, I did that. Yeah. Yeah. And see, and like you're saying, and I've heard right. that before. If you, if you would have known how he was before. But, we, but that's the thing. We know it. That's the thing. One thing I know that God has given women, two things that he's given women that men don't have and nothing taken away from my men, you guys, that y'all listen. It is influence and intuition. Influence and intuition. The right type of a woman can influence a man in one way and then he can get with another woman and the way she influences him, he'll say, okay, this one is different, which causes him to move different. If he's, if, but there again, men have to be ready um, a lot of times we try to make them ready before they're ready. And a man, if he ain't ready, I don't care how you push and how you encourage and how you flip it and flop it and split it. If he ain't ready, he ain't ready. He ain't ready. Not at all. Yeah, and that's true. But that's why I said a woman's natural nature and intuition is what helps you guys see through to the back end. Yeah. But I, I, I'm not going to say that men don't have it because some of us do. Because you can see exactly what a woman has to offer and what's inside of her. Oh, yeah. as well, just from getting to talk to her. Oh, yeah. Learn the same way that they learn you. But it's up to you as a person to see what your, your purpose is or what your assignment is or what your part in that is. And like you said, that I, I, I actually encourage women to move on and do better with the next person if they leave from me. If I see you, you doing better, I'm proud of you. I don't care about how much of that I helped you do or how much of that I got you to that point or whatever the case may be. As long as you have an idea what I was supposed to, I understand that that was the assignment I was given. Oh, that's really big of you. <laughs> she said that's really big. I mean, well, it, it, that's why I say as you mature, and some I'm people kidding. naturally have that. I'm still growing. <laughs> well, we all are. We all are. We all are still growing because just like he has that, he may have something else that, you know, he's like, whew, I'm working on that. Oh, yeah. I got some things that I need to work on for sure. <laughs> I, I'm a thousand percent sure. On. Like right now, for me, communication is not my key on the level that women want it to be. You see what I'm saying? Like a woman, when I talk to a woman, she expects daily phone calls, daily text messages and all this other type of stuff. I'm not a phone person. I talk to you in person or I, if I talk to you on the phone, I talk to you, get my point across and I go back to work. If I don't, I'm not texting you all day while I'm at work. You see what I'm saying? That's not me. Oh, well, I'm not but, doing that. <laughs> but okay, yeah. But I, yeah. But it's, ask for that. What you say? He said some women require our acts for that, but it, like most men, in my opinion, have so many that don't ask you for that. Most so men, you end up with that problem. okay, I had to, I had to adjust the volume. You can hear okay. me now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can hear you now. Yes, sir. But uh, 
Yeah, it, my, it, is some, it, it is some that require, um, it is some that require, and it's some, it's some men that want you, that, that require to know when you go from point A to point B and point A1, point A2, point A3, and then B. So, you know, um, and I think that sometimes that's, and not to say anything, you guys that are listening in or tuning in, anything bad, but many times that's why it's so important to allow yourself to heal. When you come from one relationship, what did you learn? Uh, 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 you know, even if it ended, like Brother Mark said, okay, you know, I couldn't live or I, you know, did what I guess I was supposed to do uh, for that part in your life or whatever. And so, hey, I'm happy that you're moving on. And like, you know, Sister Misha said, sometimes women, we, you know, hey, I invested all of this time and I did this and I did that. Um, and so now he's with this other person and he seems to be thriving, yet I invested into him. I mean... I mean, there again, I, I don't know I why know. that happens. I've, I've seen that happen. Um, and I've seen some women feel and like that, like I invested this time and he's going to take that what I gave him and go and build it with somebody else. Either two things. Uh, could be that was just the assignment. And then a lot of the times, us as women, we go into everything trying to, as Brother Mark said, because we're naturally nurturers, we're trying to nurture or um and we kind of make it almost like a little project now i want to say a project but we're trying to like save this person or or something like that and a lot of the times and a lot something that was just a reason we try to either make it a season or we try to make it a lifetime and it may not have been either one of those it may have just this person came in for a reason to teach you something and boom they gone they out of there but we try to take those reasons and make them lifers when sometimes they were never meant to be they were just meant to come in and teach you something about yourself and that's why it and that's it but we try to hold on and make them something that they're not and make them something that they're but, not. But see, you do have those women who take on me and have projects though. Like they really, they really feel like, okay, I'm empowering him. I mean, you know, doing this, he's going to do this, and he's never going to leave, and whatever the case may be. So some women do feel like, you know, if they're men or helping their men out, it's a project for them. They, they get validation, and they feel a way about making that man a project. Now, he don't know he a project, but you know, right. Right. Project, but, you know right. right. I'm doing good. But the, He's the doing women well. that do He's that, good. the women He's that do well. that are trying to build themselves not i can't i can hear you but it's you're a little you're a little low brother but it's you're a little you're a little low brother hold on let me see it might be just a maybe he should stay in the seat what about now? Can you hear me better now? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. I can hear you better. Okay. So, like I said, it's the women that do those projects and things of that nature are trying to build themselves a super nigga. And they ain't no such thing. <laughs> you know, you want you want a man that makes six figures. He's tall, got a six pack, got a good job, got a good car, got his own house, you know, got a career in career oriented. No kids. Like, I don't know, not, there, there is only like a five percentile in the U.S. that have no kids. Okay. And it's, it's hard to find that. Yeah. Men, men and women at this point, because it's a lot of it's a lot of single moms, and it's a bunch of dads out there that don't have no ties to their kids at all. Yeah. So yeah. it seems like they're single with, without kids because they don't care. But yeah. women are trying to take a man from the streets, and I'm going to mold him into this career man. But that's a street thing. You can't do that. Right. And it, it has a lot to do with uh I think that has a lot to do with um social media and the things that you yeah. see, the celebrities that you follow, because you have people like um just gonna you just have people out there, women who been down with him for so long and all of a sudden he come back and they all together and then he posts like, Oh, she held me down, so I'ma stay, we gonna rock it out, and you come out in the regular world. With that same mentality, because the stuff you see on social media, you like, baby, that's 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 they like, you know, they right, like, absolutely. on on that end, you need to you need to figure it out with him because he didn't come but to that's the table. That, that's the society standards. That's the society yeah. standards that's being picked upon everybody to go by. Yeah, 
Well, so not me, because I don't follow society standards. <laughs> and so you get people, like you're yeah. saying, and what I'm hearing, um, you guys, uh, for our listeners, you get people who we are trying to live the life that the people on the TV, that they're living. And well, we're trying to figure, well, maybe if I stay down with him and, and I keep on investing in him, the silver lining, then maybe hopefully one day he'll see and he'll come around. Or maybe if I just be that ride or die, you know what I mean? Um, eventually he will change. Or for the man, well, you know, if I give her, you know, what she won't take her, what she want to go, expose her to this, expose her to that, you know, then maybe she will blossom into this type of flower, you know, and she'll be the type of woman that I'm looking for. And maybe she's not, but you know, like you stated, hey, but the sex is bomb or, or you know, she can cook or, you know, or whatever. But really, you know, other than that, it's nothing else that she's really, and when I say doing for you, not that you're looking for somebody to do something for you, but but it's it's not it's not really adding no value to your life. It's it's not really adding any value. It's no substance. Yeah. It's on the outside. Like I have a, he's probably going to kill me. I ain't going to see his name. But I have a little problem. <laughs> I have a little brother. Every girl he didn't got with. He say I'm mean. I don't like nobody. But every girl he's got with, they have to have this certain look. They have to be this. They have to be that. Ask me is he still with him? No. Ask me is he complaining? Man, that girl was toxic. I knew I shouldn't have been with her. Just I don't know what I. Because you're looking for surface. Like you're not even digging deep and trying to see. What they have, to offer. You're, looking, you're looking for service. And when you look for service, you end up with toxic relationships, a baby mama you can't stand. Yeah. Other type of issues. And then you complain to me and I'm looking at you like, well, yeah. You got me mean. But I mean, hey, I told you she wouldn't. I told you. I can look at her and see it. That ain't it. So, yeah. So, and I'm sure when it comes and I'm sure when it comes to me and their sisters, they had this same thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, uh, yeah, because they can see it because they are man too. So you know, so they, they know how it look. Yeah. Do you they know how it look? Yeah, I'm, guilty, I'm guilty of that. <laughs> <'Cause>, uh, <laughs> my my sister, I, I I beat up all her boyfriends friends except for her husband. <laughs> well, he made it. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody made it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He only made it because I was gone for a year overseas. Okay. And by the time I came back, they was getting married. So. Oh yeah, she made sure. Yeah. yeah. She, <laughs> he, he said he only made it because I wasn't here. But she you made see, guys. Like, I'm do this, do this before he get back because I, I I think he might have made the test though because when I got back and got to know him, he was actually genuine. You know, he actually yeah. turned out to be the right one in the end altogether. But I think she knew what I was going to say. So that's what she kind of dug in for to begin with before mm -hmm. she tied into him. Mm -hmm. That's why he ended up making it because he met some of these standards and criteria of what I have been showing her. Because again, as I'm, a, I'm the older one, so I was in the streets first. So I know what's out there. Yeah, so yeah. To bring, so to bring this to my little sister, no, nah, he talking about this. This is what he means. He said, what? Oh, no, he doing this. You know, I used to show her everything that happened from a man's point of view because that's my little sister. So right, it's like, right. you know what? He told you what? Oh, no, that nigga ain't at home. Watch this. We go and we go catch him. She <laughs> was talking about because I know that. Because I did that. I said that. Yeah. I did the same thing. So I know better. He can't tell you no lie like that and then not realize that you have a brother that's the same way. So. Yep. Absolutely. 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 So you guys, uh, starting with you, uh, Lady Omisha, to our me. listeners, ladies and men, uh, well, I'll have you speak to the ladies. Just share some things uh, um, that when you actually begin to really, your eyes begin to be open and you actually um, begin to see. Was it easy to walk away? Sometimes it's not, but just share what steps you took, the process that you went through to get to the other side. So for me, uh, like I said, 
same guy. We haven't talked for a long time. Back and forth in each other's lives since we were in our 20s. Now we're in our 30s. Um, was it easy? No. It's never easy because you fall in love with that person. You get to know that person no matter how stupid they act or how ugly they act. You just It's just something that tugs at your heartstrings as a woman. But once you set aside your feelings for him, once you realize how much you love him and how much you don't love yourself, you really change the game. Like, oh, I put this much effort into somebody who's not putting the same effort into me, and this is every day. This has been going on. Like, you have to get to a point where you're like, you know what? Enough is enough. I don't care if it hurt. Because that was my that was my prayer. And that's my prayer in anything. Moving to yeah. another job. Moving to moving with friendships. Moving with, you know, doing anything that I want to pursue in life. God, I don't care if it's scary. I don't care if it's hard. I don't care what the outcome is. If it's beneficial for me and I need to walk in it, that's what I'm going to do. I don't care if it hurts. Yeah, nobody hurt, but I don't care if it hurts. Oh yeah, so I got, absolutely. I don't, care what, I don't care how much it hurt, and I cried about it. I cried about it. I threw stuff about it. I'm drunk. <laughs> I mean, I'm keeping real, yeah. I, mean, I, I was honest. Like I drunk. I put my um. I talk, look. I went through every emotion except denial. Denial. <laughs> said, denial. Well, was- I, because I was, ne- I was never in denial upon yeah. so we, uh, upon first meeting him I knew he yeah. wasn't for me I knew it I knew it I knew it upon meeting him I knew it but at that time I didn't like myself I didn't know who I was and I feel like I couldn't get nobody I feel like this might be my only chance to really have some happiness oh mm-hmm. there you go bingo right there oh, over when I turned 30 and I was still making my money than you. You still wasn't bringing them to the table. You done had two kids on me. You didn't be. Nah, homeboy. I'm good. I, I, yeah. God bless your heart, but I'm good. Let me, <laughs> let me get me together. And once I got me together, hey, I was rocking and rolling ever since then. Single with the purpose. Okay. That's it. So, Brother Mark, um, uh, to the listeners out there, the guys, and then the ladies they listening to, um, share your process from then learning what you learn in those toxic relationships, who you are now and where you are now, you know, to share with the men as far as staying in one, coming out of one, admit to themselves how they feel it with their emotions. Um, and being able to walk away and not necessarily have to replace uh, what they left with another woman and just being able to be able to allow them themselves to breathe and just to be okay. So just share something with the brothers, your process, um, or your steps that you took, or that you're well, taking rather, because you say you're coming, you're dealing with something, so uh, that you're taking and how to identify if you know she, <laughs> uh, uh, if you know that yes, yep. she fine and all, and she yeah do a thing if that's what y'all rocking and rolling and doing. Um, oh, so, yeah. brother Mark better come on out and start playing. You know, um, <laughs> what 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 would you share? Well, for me myself, I, I stayed in the situation for fifteen years. My God, today. <laughs> yeah, I stayed in it for. 15 years and had two kids in the whole situation and everything. And I stayed because one, I stayed for my kids first. It was about the kids. Two, it was like I stayed for convenience because I didn't want to get out there and do nothing else. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I'm not going to go out here and start dating again and start over trying to learn somebody else. I'm here. I know her. I, I can deal with the bull, whatever. I keep going, keep it moving. And you kind of bury yourself into that into that rut. And then it turned into, instead of wanting to go home, I buried myself into work or yeah. find something to do with myself, find some hobbies and other things like that. And that drug on three to five years right there. You see what I'm saying? Just being at work 24-7 to keep oh, my goodness. mind off of being where I was versus dealing with it. Yeah, yeah. But then it came to that point where I just actually had to wake up and look at myself like, hey, you killing your life, you killing yourself. 
and you're not showing your kids nothing but how to tolerate something. So I had to walk away. Yeah. Plain and simple. I mean, it just became a, it, it's, it becomes hard for you, especially when you uh, have learned some comfortability with where you are to start over. Oh, yeah. Like now, I know it's extremely hard to start over now because of the standards now and the way this stuff is all over the world with social media and, and mm -hmm. everything else. Starting over can be the scariest thing in the world. Yeah, yeah. My boy, yes. Yes, 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 indeed. But you got to try it. And you, you, I mean, you still have to keep your groundings and your understanding for who you are and how, how you love yourself and what makes you happy at the forefront before you can make somebody else happy. So now dealing within my own happiness, I understand when the red flags pop up. Yeah. If it's not something that can be corrected, it's something that you leave alone. Absolutely. 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 It's crazy because I was sitting here as Mark was talking, I was laughing because my mom is in the background and she's talking about uh-huh, because I stayed in some for 23 years for the children. <laughs> nobody asked you. Yes, but nobody, see, nobody asked her. I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad she got out, but we you're not a we didn't ask you. <laughs> but, I, but you see how but you see how relatable it is. You see how people stay for their children. Like mm -hmm. you see that, like Mark said, I stayed for my kids. I knew, but it was my kids. And I, I understand it. I don't have kids, but I understand it. And see, I will I will share this. I uh, um I will say this in my relationship, well, my marriage, when I was married to my daughter's father, I guess because I saw people doing that. I saw that and I was like, I, I don't how do you do that? I don't know if I was wired different or whatever. I know some people was like, Well, you're not gonna stay because the child is gonna go through. You know what I said? Hey, I went through it when I was a kid and I'm all right. Guess what? <laughs> they gonna have to get with it, and they gonna have to be all right because I I, I can't be very comfortable. I'm in this relationship. I know that you don't love me. I feel it. I know it. I know it. You know what I'm saying? And I know I'm about getting so sick of you, till I don't even know what to do. So somebody has got to leave. If I gotta be the bad guy and be the one to leave, and I did. Yes, I know, you know, it hurt my child. Yes, I, I know it did. Though at the same time, I, I, I just couldn't. You told me, you have a lot to learn, I, and I'm still learning. Though that was something, I, I just couldn't do it. So people, you know, and I'm not ragging on anybody who stays for their kids, because everybody does what they feel they need to do at that point in time. Though, like Mark said, a key thing, we teach our children then to deny themselves of what they're feeling, and put it under the, the rug and sweep it under the rug and tolerate something, then you wonder why the person blow up and all this other stuff is going, that stuff has been festering for years. And all of a sudden it takes one little small thing and, and she may say something like, you know what, um, I'm thinking about cooking this and he, you know what, I'm tired. And dude, all I, I'm talking about cooking food and you blowing up because he's, it's been festering for years. I'm staying here and I'm tolerating it. So this woman, she's ready for him to go. The brother say, hey, you know what? I'm supposed to get up and go. But you know what? Won't you leave? Since you always want to leave. And he was like, hey, I was just going to say I'm going to the store. Right. Because that, so I'm just saying, I get it that you stay for your kids. And like I say, people out there, listen, I'm not ragging. But one, once you begin to learn to love yourself, you know who you are. One, I'm telling you, you got to have a relationship with God because many times, it, for me, if I didn't have that, I'd probably do some real retarded to where my child ain't going to have the daddy or the mom, if you understand what I'm saying. So somebody has to make a decision, even if it doesn't look or feel good. Um, you can't stay in a toxic relationship. Like they say, you can't keep doing the same thing, hoping and wishing for different results because what do they call that? Insanity. Insanity. Because it's not going to change. Because people will change when they feel that they are ready to change. Can't change people. We're only responsible for ourselves and we need help with ourselves. So I don't care, like I say, how you flip, flop, and split it, and whatever, and all they kind of do. Brother man, how you lay it and slay it, it doesn't matter. If that person got problems within themselves, 
I, I don't care what you do. But they they're going to wear you out. And then that's why you get this person can go on and you like, I'm over here feeling broke down and they all rejuvenated and energized with their new boo. And you up here looking woke the heck out. You just tired. Yeah, and you're tired. And then when a, a man comes along that tries to love you because you are so broken and you also broke down, like you say, you self sabotage. And the man, like, I'm trying to encourage you, like, brother Mark, I'm trying to come, I'm trying to help. I'm trying. But, you know, hey, she like, I, I, you know, I'm tired of them Negroes. Tired of them men. You know, woo, woo, woo. You know, so. So I don't know if either one of y'all watched the show Sisters, but it is a. It, I've it heard is a, it. I haven't watched it. It, but is I've heard a, it. it is a dynamic on that show that is like it. So the girlfriend and the boyfriend, they break up. Um, the boyfriend moves on to somebody else, but the ex-girlfriend, she was so negative toward him, no matter how much he tried, no matter what he did, it wasn't good enough, he didn't make enough money, like she was so ugly to him, but he finds another woman, he gets with her, she's encouraging, she motivates him, she does everything that she needs to do to help him out, to help him feel secure, everything, and so now he has come up, and he's doing well in life, and so the ex-girlfriend, she mad, she pissed off, why it took him only a couple of months to do this with you and he wouldn't do this with me in three days and you're mad and like the girlfriend's like really mad at the new girl like how did you get here and do this and i'm looking at the tv like did you not see how you treated him you were the toxic one yeah yeah but then the ex-girlfriend has a man who loves her like he really really loves her and wants to be with her she ain't having none of it don't talk to me don't bring me no ice cream no i don't want to talk to you like she's really ugly acting and i'm just looking like you got single women out here like me trying to <laughs> this is not cute to put on TV. Don't teach people this. Yeah. But that's how but that's how it really goes though. But it it does. It, it, really, it really does go that way. It's crazy that you can say that because I, I from from personal experience, like I was scared to get out of my relationship because my kids were being used against me. You know, yeah. you leave you ain't gonna see the kids did that kind of stuff. So I and that's so ugly to me. I don't get that. Ugly. And you end up getting put in the rut for that. Or but after I got out and then you get somebody else and you try to be yourself, which means I am a caring person. So I listen to you as a woman. So if I know you like ice cream and things of that nature, you just had a hard day, then I show up with your favorite ice cream. You mad at that? For what? You know, exactly. like, you, you're too mad. You like you get mad at me. You say I'm too nice and and you you care too much. You doing too much. That's doing too much. No, I, I think mean, it's it's the it's the bitterness after after like I said because I'm I'm kind of pity sometimes, and so it's, it 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 turns into being a tad bit bitter. Yeah. Yeah, the other person has found someone that kind you know that makes him that that you know you you yeah. see them laughing and kick in and so now you like. Why I wasn't enough. It it, it it everything just plays on the way you feel about yourself if you're not secure in who you are. It all Absolutely. plays into all of it. And so it, you become bitter. And so when a guy do come around, hey, I know you like seafood, let's go have crawfish. Oh, hey, I know you like this, let's go do this. Hey, let's take a weekend, let's do this. Separate rooms, yada, yada, yada. You looking like, no, nah, I want to do it. Why would you want to do it? Like, what was good? Like, why? What, you, what, what, is, what is your end game? That, that's how, but it's gonna be all right, you know. <laughs> she said it's gonna be all right. <laughs> it's gonna be all right. I'm not, yeah. I don't want nobody, listeners, I don't want nobody to think that I'm bitter because I'm definitely not. But I have had my bitter and petty moments, okay? Oh, I think we all have. Like Brother Mark said, men have it, they just show it differently. Um, they see us, you know, we're gonna tell our girlfriends, we're gonna have our wait to exhale moments. You know, and it's funny that Brother Mark had mentioned that earlier because I was reading an article and that's what the article said, that it's hard for men when they want to express that I'm feeling, I'm hurt, I want to get out of this, I need some help, can I talk to somebody? He said, it's easier for men to talk about the, the games and all this other kind of stuff. But when it comes to talking about their feelings, a man with another man, that's foreign. It's like, dude, you know, what's wrong with you? You know, but you know, and it's crazy, but that is society. You know, that, that's just how society is. And then um, when you said about um, the, the show where, okay, the guy, one, the guy is not ready. See, I, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer that when a person is not ready 
and they're ready to receive something, when that person comes, that person just happened to come into that man's life, now he's ready. It's really something that was already there, but this woman came and woke it up. Yeah. And so now he's ready to receive it. And then um, it's a way to be combative, I guess you could say, with your significant other without always being so extra confrontational. You know, yeah. it's a way to be submissive and not appear to be weak. You know what I'm saying? That you don't have to always go back and forth about everything. You don't always have to uh, uh, have the last say. You know, is it worth losing this relationship to make sure that he know you right? To make sure now, that lady, she know you the man and you in charge. Man, Lady Rush, you say be so what? The missus. Jesus. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I mean, a lot. See, but there again, this is the thing, people that are listeners women men that are unmarried and even if you are married being submissive we look at that word as a bad word oh my god submissive that means i'm submitting do you know how much strength it takes to submit but first of all once you know who you are and you know you are settled that's why i'm telling you people go from relationship rest if you better get your relationship with god right first so you can be complete within your own self as complete as you can be okay because it doesn't matter because whatever I do for you, if I cook your dinner, clean your clothes, make sure your house clean, give you some courage and words, blah, blah, yada, yada, whatever. And you got a problem. Hey, that's your problem. I don't mind doing that because I don't see it as, oh, you know, that means I'm less than or I'm whatever. I'm still me. I know I still got it going on. I know that if the brother leave today or tomorrow, I'm going to feel it, but I'm still going to be able to get up and move on because I, I know me. I, I, I've, I've got to learn me. So that's the problem. Like you said, both of y'all are saying that some people, they either um, have not gotten to learn themselves. That's the, that's the gap. When God gives you that escape, take that, that, that period to get to know you. Okay, see, I see them chicks that they look like this and that. But a lot of them, they, they you know, want all of this. You got to do this. They want to make, as Brother Mark said, this super ninja. Hey, this is all I have, sister. I'm trying to be a better man. I'm working on me. But you're trying to make me to be something that I'm not. I can't do that. If I, if I can't offer this to you and you can't love me like this, you know, or whatnot or what have you, then maybe I'm not the one for you. Vice versa to the lady. Hey, she could turn 20 flips. Maybe I can turn a good 10. Maybe really to be honest, a good five. If that's not good enough for you, then hey, you know, but we try to please people. And you guys both did a show back in the beginning about are you really uh, uh, high, uh, what is it? Are you really low maintenance? Are you really high maintenance? I forgot what it was. I think it was low maintenance, but you neglecting yourself. And that was something that a lot of people, um, you, you're not really low maintenance. You're just neglecting yourself because you're doing it. And the brother Mark had mentioned on that show because society with men and then two, um, we're trying to do something for somebody else and we are killing ourselves. 15 years, he said he did, whatever. Hey, I did it for eight. I, I did for eight, I, I, you know, and I said, I, I, you know, I had a part of the sun moment. Why am I even here? Why am I doing this to myself? Like he said, why am I doing this to myself? And one day you wake up and, and the sad part about it, people out there, some people never wake up. Some people never wake up. Some women, they stay. The men have all babies here and there, none with you. Um, this, that, and the other, it's all in your face. Some men are with a woman that she just so ugly. Her attitude is stank. She look good, but her attitude is stank. She tear him down. She never builds him up. But for whatever reason, no he stank. So, yeah. So, so yes, sir. This has been good on tonight. Huh? This has really been a good conversation on tonight. Yeah, um, because a lot of people, I, I, you know, and y'all were my first two that to do when we were talking about so, somewhat similar about this and, um, you know, a lot of people do it. And I wanted to bring Brother Mark on, one, because he was uh, on before, but then two, again, we always look at the woman. It's always the woman that, and not knowing men are secretly dying on the inside too. You know, men, you know, they may not get the physical, but they get the psychological because she don't believe in him. She don't lift him up. She don't support him. You know, that's that's gotta be hard. I catch hell already when I'm at work. My home is the last place that I wanna come home. In case hey. what you got to say about that brother mark well that's exactly what it is my post today was 
I don't never get the congratulations or the you doing great part. I, I only get the what I'm doing wrong. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? That's it. That's all I'm expected to receive or all I'm expected to be told is what I'm missing, what I didn't do, what I should have done, what I could be doing. It ain't what you are doing is good or what you are doing is striving toward to be better or that you on the right path, brother. I'm proud of you. This, this, and that. You'll never get the I'm proud of you part. You see what I'm saying? The only time you get a I'm proud of you is when it's benefiting them. Mm. Oh, I'm proud of you. You just bought this new thing and I get to come over here and we get a new house and oh, I get I get something out of it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I'm I I get to say I'm proud of you on camera so somebody can see me. You know, that's when you get the I'm proud of you. Other than that, you're not gonna get that. Mm. So that's where the problem lies is we fail as men to be able to uplift each other without it seeming weak or without it seeming like you too sensitive or soft or that it's wrong to uplift another man in, in, in anybody's eyes, you know? Mm -hmm. So, hey. I think that that should be a topic for another. Yeah, and, yeah. I do too. I do too. And, and I do too. A topic for another segment, get a bunch of oh, guys. Yes. <laughs> We can walk to life first because that's an open conversation that needs to be yeah. had. Yeah. Why can't, why can't, why is it that women can't, can't cry, Why can't they cry? Yeah. Why can't they be vulnerable around each other? Why you have to be proud in this aspect, but not in this aspect? Why y'all can't like, why men don't hug? Like, why? Like, you're not, just because you hug a man or you tell the man that you love them, doesn't make them gay, doesn't make them weak. It just makes them in tune with who they are as men. Oh. So, but if you look at it, if you look at it, look at the look at the standards that set on that. If you yeah. see a man cry, whether it be on TV, like when uh, Will Smith cried and Tyrese cried and all that, what happened? They yeah. turned into memes. They was made fun of for years. Yeah, let's see. It's not yeah. yeah, that would definitely that be one. That would definitely, definitely be one. Uh, we'll have to have my brothers. You guys, uh, y'all here that we y'all gonna be uh, uh, soon to hear where uh, bring we mom some, back some brothers talking. You know, um, you know, uh, brother, what's going on? And then I'm gonna because I'm gonna have one for y'all. So y'all be listening. Y'all heard it here. I'm gonna have one for the brothers, and I'm gonna have one for the sisters because I want to know uh, what we're gonna talk about. Where it's just the sisters. Why we can't congratulate each other? It is not a competition. Baby, it's, it's the medium, medium small, small, whatever. Why can't we congratulate each other? Why? Why do we have to be a petty baby or a chatty Cathy or, 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 or either say that's my sister in her face, but really we can't stand her. So I'm not going to go no further. We're going to drop it right there. I want to say thank you to my brother, Mark. Um, I want to say thank you to my sister, Lady Omisha. Yes, y'all going to hear from them again um, on different segments, but y'all will be hearing from them again. Um, it's been awesome. I thank you guys out there for tuning in to the BPG Inspirational Station.com. I thank you because we, we, we love you guys for free. And sometimes love don't always mean we're giving you what you want. We're giving you what you need because that's what love is. Love ain't always giving you what you want. Uh, uh, is giving you what you need at that time. And that's true. And, and we and our culture need it so badly. And then we, even in the church, we go to hear the truth, but we need to learn how to live it and apply it. Because many times we just hear it and we really ain't living it. So before we get up out of here, Brother Mark, do you, anything you want to uh, give a shout out? Or, well, anything you want to share with the people before we go? All I want to say is that we have to start loving each other more than what we are. We have to start uplifting each other as a culture, as a society, and as a family versus trying to tear each other down and apart. And like um, I, I always been taught and I've always been told, you love as hard as you can, regardless of what's given back to you and mm. you'll get yours in the end. That's it. Because you did what you were supposed to do in life. That's it, that's so. it. All right, my sister. Um, he said everything and just be accountable.
Yeah. It's been kind of a fire action, but kind of a fire feelings, you know? But Mark pretty much said everything. That is true. That is true. We have to do this. So you guys, again, I want to thank y'all for tuning in, allowing us to come into your home on this beautiful Saturday. Um, catch us always every Saturday at new time. It's now 1 p.m. on the BPG Inspiration Station.com. We are singles with a testimony. Hey, share it. It's people out here, as I say, dying in these streets. Even us as the body of Christ, hey, let people know that you're real. Let people know that you've been where they One are. One sec. And know that they're able to come up out of it. And don't just tell them, show them. And that's through love. So with that being said, we out of here. Peace, one love, and enjoy the rest of y'all Saturday.